Hey guys, Chris from Hockey Tutorial, and today in this video, Richard and I are going to be taking a look at some of the things that every hockey player should know before they buy a stick. Whether you've been playing the game for a few years or you're new to hockey, these are going to be some points that you should bear in mind before you pick up your brand new hockey stick. We're also going to be taking a look at some of the terminology used with hockey sticks and explaining it in a little bit more detail. So in order to look at all aspects of sticks, we've broken it down into five different areas. Those are height, grip, blade pattern, flex and kick point. So the first thing, nice and simple, grip. You either get sticks without grip or you get sticks with grip. Grip sticks have a few variances. 1S, for example, we've got little ridges down the back. There's a few other different nuances, stick to stick. However, basically, do you like a tacky feel? If so, go for grip. If you like your stick to be quite smooth, and by that I mean fairly slippery, go no grip. So next on the list is stick height. Now this is gonna depend a lot on the individual height of the player. A tall guy is just gonna need a longer stick more often than a short guy. But also this changes depending on the player's skating stance. If you skate quite upright, you're gonna need a longer stick, depending again on lie, but this is something we'll go over later in blade patterns. Somebody that skates really bent over, shorter stick. If you look at Crosby, always got his knees bent, uses a really short stick. Now there are gonna be a few things that will definitely happen depending on your stick length. If you're going for a longer stick, you're gonna have better reach. If you're going for a shorter stick, you're gonna be better in close. Take these things into account when you're picking how long you want your stick. So those are some fundamental rules that should be quite easy to follow. However, as we always say here, it's personal preference as much as anything. If you prefer a shorter stick or you prefer a longer stick, feel free to just go with it, whatever works for you. Ultimately, these are just rule of thumb. The final thing to mention about stick length is flex. Some stick lengths are only available in certain flexes. If you're looking for, say, a 77 in Bauer, you may not be able to get that the same way you'd get a 75 in CCM. So just be aware of that before you fork out the money. This leads us nicely into stick flex. Now, flex is a number attached to how flexible your stick is. The number actually means the amount of pounds needed to flex the stick one inch. Again, we have some rules of thumb that can be followed for stick flex. If you're a player who's normally gonna be taking slap shots, a slap shot tends to prefer a higher flex in a stick. This being you're gonna put a lot more energy in and you're gonna want that stick to really kick back. Conversely, players who are taking real quick release in tight shots are gonna prefer a lower flex in a stick. This is just so they can get more force through that stick without as much energy. As I briefly touched on before, flex does occasionally reflect the length of stick you're gonna be able to buy. So make sure you check your chosen manufacturer's stick information before you make your purchase. As you can imagine with flex, it's again personal preference. I'm a defenseman, I only use a 75 flex because I'm not the strongest of guys. Ultimately, again, what works for you is gonna be the most important thing, but these are just some general rules of thumb that might help you make the right decision off the bat. Another rule you may have heard is that your flex should be half your weight in pounds. So for example, if you're a 210 pound guy, you should be using 105 flex. This is, again, just a general rule. It helps if you are a heavier guy with a higher flex, However, if you prefer higher flex for your own personal reasons, stick handling, for example, and passing, or if you prefer a lower flex for your own personal reasons, you like to bend the stick like a fluke and blow an arrow, then go with it. We've touched on this in previous videos, but you may have noticed that some NHLers, so Johnny Goodrow is a good example, and Phil Kessel is another, using exceptionally low flex sticks due to personal preference. Johnny Goodrow actually uses a 55, which is, I believe, an intermediate flex. That's just an example that you shouldn't be afraid to go with something a little crazy if it works for you. So one of the things that marries up really well with flex is your kick point on your stick. We tend to see either mid, low, or super low kick points on sticks nowadays. An example of a mid kick stick would maybe be a Warrior HD1 or a Bauer 1S. Similarly, we're going for low kick, that's gonna be a Warrior Alpha or a CCM Ribcore. And then if we're going super low kick, we're looking at say a Warrior QRL or a Bauer 1X. Now kick points are where the stick is gonna flex. So this is gonna change the type of shot that you're best suited to with that stick. Super low kick point sticks are more often used for a snap shot or maybe a wrist shot. Whereas for example, slap shots are gonna require a high kick point if you're really looking to get the most out of the stick. No stick prevents you from taking any kind of shot. It's just certain sticks are better suited to taking a particular type of shot and that's where they excel. You tend to see that the kick point, because it's related to a type of shot, shares a typical flex. Snapshots tend to have a lower flex, low kick point sticks tend to be used for snapshots. Therefore, you tend to see a lot of, say, 75 Warrior QRLs or Barrel 1Xs. Conversely, slap shots, you're looking for a higher flex point, you're looking for a high kick point. So you'll perhaps get a Barrel 1S. 
with a 100 or 105 flex. That being said, if you're used to using a 75 flex and that's what you get on best with, yet you prefer a Bauer 1S, don't feel like the two are mutually exclusive. If you want a 1S and you want it in a 75 flex, go for it. These are just guidelines. Finally, we come to what is probably the most personal preference aspect of any stick, and that is your blade pattern. Now, you can go to any website and look at their blade pattern chart, and that will tell you all sorts of things, the length of the blade, the openness of the blade, the depth of the curve. These all change the way a shot will roll off the blade and the way you're gonna be able to use a stick to its most effectiveness. Now, as much as we can analyze how different patterns are gonna affect your shot in different ways, this is the most hands-on aspect of sticks. You're gonna to have to go out there and you're gonna to have to try a few. I'm lucky enough that I've managed to try a few in my time and I know exactly what I'm looking for now, but there was a time when I didn't have a clue. Now, the two most popular blade patterns you're gonna come across are Bowers P92, which is the equivalent of a Warrior W03, and the P88, which is the equivalent of a W88. These are two completely different curves, but again, these are the two most popular curves. You're probably best off starting here and then moving on from there, depending on your personal preference. These are probably the best two examples of two completely differing stick patterns. The PAA is a slightly shorter blade, it's closed faced, and it's very, very shallow. This is typically a stick handler's type of blade. It's easy to control on the backhand, but it's not the best for getting real hard, powerful shots, and the closed face isn't the best for going top shelf. By contrast, the P92 is a slightly longer blade. It's open and it's a toe curve, which means it's quite a deep pocket and it's mainly located towards the toe. This stick's really good for going top shelf because of the openness of the blade, and toe drags and quick wristers are what this stick is all about. The heel aspect of this stick is also really straight, which helps it in the stick handling department. However, I don't personally prefer it as much as I would like the P88. So these two blades also come in two different lies. This is the angle of the stick blade to the shaft. This is dependent on where your hand position is when you're playing the game. If your hands are low, you're gonna have a different lie to a person whose hands are high. This is to ensure maximum blade coverage on the ice, despite your personal skating stance, height, or style. Though we have only highlighted these two curves, that isn't to say there aren't many, many more to pick from. Especially in the North American market, you're gonna have access to hundreds, literally hundreds of different curves if you go across all makes and models. Make sure if you're not happy with what you've got, go down to your local pro shop, have a chat, try and work out what's best for you, and give it a try. So most stick manufacturers will have a blade pattern chart which will give you the pros and cons of all their different patterns. Whilst these are reasonably accurate, the only way you're gonna be able to tell for yourself exactly what you like and exactly what you're looking for is to try things out. So make sure to get your hands on as many different curves as possible if you can to get the right fit for you. That was better. I don't like it, it's good, but okay. So is that one done? Uh, I think that's everything. Yeah? Let me just wrap it. Okay. Yeah, or you can wrap it if you want. Be my guest. I think I'm better at ending or closing these videos than Richard is. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you want to see more footage like this where we're kind of explaining the differences, especially with sticks because there are so many different variations, so many different options, please let us know down below in the comments section. This is a video that I've definitely wanted to put out for a while and I hope that it's given you guys the information that you needed. Thanks for watching. Give the video a thumbs up if you like these kinds of videos. Come here then. Thanks for watching if you like these kinds of videos. Make sure you thumbs up the video if you like this kind of content. Hit the subscribe button down below and we will catch you in the next one. Thank you very much. Take care till next time. He's been here the whole time. How great is he? He's been super quiet. Subscribe, thumbs up, comment down below for what you want to see. Bye.